welcome to episode 4 of Let's Spark the Debate. On today's episode, we'll look at two NBA greats who brought nothing but swagger and showmanship to the league. Before we start, if you didn't get a chance to see last week's episode, I've left a link for you in the description. Also, please don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Now let's get to it. first contestant is the man they call the human highlight reel. That name alone speaks for itself. Dominique Wilkins a man with a hundred posters. He's the only player I know to routinely dunk on people with dunk contest dunks. As smooth as silk, his opponent Clyde the Glide Drexler, a player who moved with great finesse, he was as versatile as they come, never flustered by defenses, and was a dominant finisher at the basket. Back to our usual format for this week, it's a best of five matchup where the first three points declared the winner. The categories are physical attributes, total offense, total defense, plus minus in PER, and accolades. For the advanced stats round, plus minus wasn't collected until the late 90s, so instead we will look at total win shares. Time for round one. Out of the University of Houston, Clyde Drexler was considered a physical specimen. He had tremendous speed and athleticism which allowed him to be a great acrobatic dunker, and for this reason he entered into numerous dunk contests in the late 80s. With a very lanky build, he stands at 6'7", 210 pounds, and played in a total of 1,086 games for his career. Okay, now let's not get ahead of ourselves. If we're really talking physical specimen, look no further than Dominique Wilkins. He seemed to have unlimited bounce. I'm actually surprised people really tried to jump with this guy. So many contact dunks. A combination of speed and aggression made him a low to handle. With a height of 6'8", 215 pounds, and 1,076 games for his career, this man was a beast. To absolutely no one's surprise, I gave round one to Wilkins. I dare someone to argue this with me. Now let's see some offense. Clyde Drexler was always known as a great finisher, but his total offensive package was not that great. Over the course of his career, however, he developed into a lethal offensive threat with great versatility, efficient in the post, and a solid outside jumper. He was routinely among the league leaders in assists, and as of 2008, he leads all guards with 2.4 offensive rebounds per game. For his career, he averaged 20.4 points per game to go along with his 5.6 assists. Solid from the field at almost 50%, and remained decent at the 3 for his time at 31% and 80% from the free throw line. 2.7 turnovers isn't that great, but when you have the ball in your hands most of the game, it's understandable. It's a known fact that Dominique Wilkins is primarily known for his crazy dunking ability, but he did do more than just dunk. Yes, he didn't have an amazing finishing ability, but he had a decent jump shot, proficient in the post, and an excellent free throw shooter at 80%. For his career, he averaged 24.8 points per game, which is beautiful, but he was never really known as a playmaker, only averaging 2.8 assists per game. He could knock down the three at a decent clip at almost 32% and 46% overall from the floor. He and Drexler dominated the ball, so I'm not surprised that he averaged 2.5 turnovers per game. Drexler takes home round two. I know Wilkins could score more, but it's Drexler's versatility in both scoring and passing that did it for me. Time to put the clamps on. When fans think about Dominique Wilkins, defense never comes to mind. Wilkins was an offensive star who struggled on the defensive side of the ball. You'd think someone with out of this world physical ability would be able to put the clamps on somebody. Guess not. Larry Bird even joked about it during Wilkins' statue unveiling, saying, I'm pretty sure it's not made in defensive stance. 
Wilkins could rebound the ball, averaging nearly 7 per game, and average 1.3 steals. But besides that, I'm calling him a liability. Drexel was just as versatile on the defensive end as he was on the offensive end. Great rebounder, averaging just over 6 per game, as well one of the league leaders in steals at 2 per game. Drexel was also great at getting blocks for his size. Although he averaged less than a block per game, he ranks third overall amongst guards in total career blocks, with 719 total blocks for his career. Drexel takes round three in the lead. How the hell are you that athletic and can't play defense? For shame, Wilkins. Time for some advanced stats. Win shares is a measure that is assigned to players based on their offense, defense, and playing time. A win share is worth one third of a team win. If a team wins 60 games, there are a total of 180 win shares to distribute among the players. Drexler carried his team to multiple finals appearances in 50 win seasons, so it makes sense that he took most of the shares at 135.6 total win shares. He was also excellent in staying efficient and effective on the court, which contributed to his 21.1 PER rating. And lastly, he both controlled and dictated the flow of his team's offensive game, leading to a high usage of 25.4. Wilkins was a dominant scorer, and he led the league in scoring multiple times with multiple 30 point per game seasons. It makes sense that he would take up about a third of his team's total usage at 30.3. I wouldn't even care if I'm his teammate, I get to see way more windmills. He did stay efficient, especially since most of his points are around the paint. Him and Drexler are about even in PR, Wilkins about 22 in the category. Where they differ, however, is in win shares column as Drexler has superiority in the category, with Wilkins reaching just about 118. Drexler takes round four. It's hard to ignore those win share numbers. Drexler was carrying them, boys. Now let's finish up. Now these boys got a whole lot of accolades, all well earned after a long NBA career. Wilkins was able to achieve 9-time NBA All-Star, 1-time All-NBA First Team, 4-time All-NBA Second Team, 2-time All-NBA Third Team, NBA All-Rookie First Team, NBA Scoring Champ in 1986, 2-time NBA Slam Dunk Champion, his number 21 retired by the Hawks, and he's in the Hall of Fame. He also has a bunch of EuroLeague accolades, but I didn't think to include them. Drexler's got hella accolades too. NBA champion in 1995, 10-time NBA All-Star, 1-time All-NBA First Team, 2-time All-NBA Second Team, 2-time All-NBA Third Team, his number 22 retired by the Blazers and the Rockets, and of course he's in the Hall of Fame. Even though this last round was really just a formality, it goes to Wilkins, and our winner after 5 rounds is Clyde the Glide Drexler. You can't ignore how versatile he was as a player, from his scoring and passing ability to his defensive prowess being able to record both great block and steal numbers. Yes, you can get a great show with Wilkins, but if I'm trying to win, I'm taking Drexler. Thanks again for getting this far in the video, I hope you enjoyed it. I got another matchup coming up next week, so stay tuned. Lastly, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, would really appreciate it. Thanks.